Today we'll show how we installed new brake pads and rotors on a 2007 Honda Civic. This does apply to Civics from 2006 to 2011. Feel free to jump ahead to different parts of the video depending on what you're looking for. We called a local Honda dealership to find the cost to have this work done and had two different quotes as you see on the screen. And then we looked at what it would cost to buy the parts and do the work ourselves from rockauto.com. Put a link to the listing for these brake parts uh, in the video description, but as you can see, we could save $150 to $300. Here are the list of tools that we used for this work, um, and then you'll also notice throughout this video that we'll have uh, images from the Honda service manual to give additional insight and information. Here's the box that arrived from Rock Auto, including the PowerStop Evolution Plus brake pad set and rotors from the brand called Centric. This wasn't their economy line, it wasn't their premium line, it's kind of their daily driver line. Um, overall, I was pretty pleased with the quality of the components. Before we jump in, I wanted to show kind of the area we'll be working today, which is predominantly the front uh, brakes of the vehicle, as well as in the engine bay. We'll be looking a little bit at the brake uh, fluid as we go throughout this job. Um, pretty much just the front portion of the vehicle, so pretty straightforward. Safety first, we recommend chalking rear wheels so the vehicle doesn't move at all during the, the work. Next, you need to break loose the lug nuts on the vehicle um, before you lift the vehicle. And that, that's an important step. It's a lot easier uh, to do it this way. Next, you want to locate your jack points. So these are the ones on the side, and then this is the front one. You can kind of see the three holes with an arrow pointing to the middle hole. The middle hole is where you want to put the jack as you lift the vehicle up. From here, simply insert the jack, crank it up, lift the vehicle high enough to where you can get the jack stands uh, to fit underneath the side jacking points, and then you go ahead and just slide those in. Now it's time to go ahead and lower the vehicle so it rests on the actual jack stands. Um, once this is done, you can back away the lift and remove the lug nuts from the wheel and pull the wheel off the vehicle, place it off to the side or underneath the vehicle as an additional safety gap measure if you'd like. The caliper has four total bolts. This 12 mil millimeter and then this 17 millimeter. These are the two top. You can't see the bottom ones. If the pin spins as you're removing the 12 millimeter right here, you might need an open-ended wrench right there by the boot that, and that's a 19 millimeter. Our pin did not spin so we didn't need the 19 millimeter here to remove this 12 millimeter. Next, here's a 12 millimeter from below. Using a screwdriver, you can pry and pull off the top part of the caliper, um, exposing the brake pads. Here you'll want to connect this top portion of the caliper up high and away, out of your way. You don't want it to dangle by its own uh, tube, so um, I'm using a zip tie here in this situation to tie it to the strut body up above. Next, you remove the pads and the shims from the brake housing. Um, in our case, the shims were really well kind of gooed up and stuck to the brake pad so they came off all together, but you want to make sure that you get um, both components off as you remove them from the vehicle. As you can see, these are really, really worn out. To remove the caliper bracket, you get your 17 millimeter socket or wrench, whatever you're using here. You can lay down on your back and kind of push up, or in this case, I'm using a rubber mallet. Or simply place it and then start to bang um, really hard until it loosens up. And here we are in the bottom 17 millimeter bolt, um, loosening that up as well. Definitely takes a little bit of effort. Once loose, simply take your hand and bring them back them out the rest of the way. Then you can take off the bracket. With the bracket removed, you'll want to then remove the pad retainers which are these little metal pieces right here, and prepare the area for cleaning. To remove the rotor off the vehicle, you need to remove these set screws. Now, these came off really easy for me this time because I put anti-seize on them the last time I replaced the rotors, um, but for a lot of people it'll be difficult, and in this case you might need a tool like this impact wrench where you place it in and bang it with a mallet really hard, and as you hit it, it twists and loosens it up. Um, in this case I didn't need it because again I used anti-seize the previous time so I was able to really easily uh, take these on and off. 
this is a part that's unique across Honda. Uh, I've seen this on my, my minivan, my Odyssey, a lot of the other vehicles. So uh, not typically found on a lot of other vehicles. But once you have these off, you can then start to kind of bang away with a rubber mallet to try to loosen up uh, the, the, the rotor. Rotor didn't want to come off very easily, so I took some WD-40 to kind of spray in areas where corrosion uh, might be binding the pieces together. And so after waiting a few minutes, I uh, came back and banged on it again to get the, the rotor off of the hub. As you see, it didn't take a whole lot of effort, just a little bit of time for the penetrant to do its work, and then from there, able to access and pull off the old rotor to then install the new one. As you can see, definitely pretty nasty inside. Next, I've installed the new rotor backwards and applied uh, brake cleaner to the surface and kind of wiped it down and flipped it around into the other side um, all the way around to kind of get off the grease that comes from the manufacturer uh, so it's ready to go. Next, line up the holes correctly and place it for its final time. You can torque the set screws if you'd like to manufacture. I think it's round seven, um, as the image shows here, but just something really light. Here I'm cleaning the caliper brackets by spraying brake cleaner. You can get a wire brush and kind of scrape in there if you'd like. It really wasn't too bad. Um, then from here, just installing the new pad retainers that came with the brake kit, and they just snapped on really easily. Here's the old pad next to the new. I'm including this graphic right here, which lists how to tell um, at what point the brake pad should be removed from a thickness standpoint, but pretty straightforward. I need new pads. Before reassembling everything, I like to go ahead and, at this point, push the piston back into the caliper housing. And I do this by taking an old brake pad and a C-clamp. The image shown on the left shows a special tool that Honda uses and recommends uh, to do this, but pretty straightforward and simple with a C-clamp. Uh, this is a 5-inch C-clamp I think I got from Harbor Freight, but pretty straightforward in that you just place the old pad there um, and kind of push it back. As you can kind of see, I have a little bit of a tear in the boot, something I'll kind of watch and, and keep an eye on. but I'm not too overly concerned about it. Before assembling everything back, here I'm pulling out the torque wrench um, and I'll be listing kind of the torque specs for the different areas here on out. But it's really important. Brake system is somewhat important for the vehicle, so I highly recommend uh, torquing everything to the right specs. In this case, we're putting the bracket back on. These are the 17 millimeter bolts, um, which you torque to 79 foot pounds. So here, um, doing the bottom one, uh, just go until you hear it click. Next, you'll want to take the grease that comes supplied with the kit and put it on the ends of the brake pads, kind of rub it around a little bit, and then go ahead and place the pads inside the retainer clips. This is on the outside one then you do the brake pad with the inside. The inside brake pad is the one with this uh, noise squealing clip that you see that's protruding out one end. Next, go ahead and break free the caliper housing. In this case, I had zip ties that I cut, and once it was able to uh, freely swing, I moved it over and placed it over the brake pads. This is possible because the piston has been pushed back in if that wasn't done at this step, you would not be able to get the, the caliper back over the brake pads. Now you take your 12 millimeter and torque it to 37 foot-pounds on the bottom and top. With the caliper back on, you can now move your wheel back into its location, lift it up, and tighten the lug nuts back on. Anytime you deal with tightening lug nuts, it's recommended to kind of go in a star pattern. So start at one end, in this case of the five, and then when you hand tighten one, move across and do the next and kind of go back and forth. You kind of want to evenly apply pressure that way. With the wheels hand tight, you can remove your jack stands and now lower your vehicle down to the ground. Now go ahead and torque the lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. Um, again, uh, ideal situation here once you start getting uh, pretty tight is to clamp down and then move across and move across, move across. Try not to just go in a circular pattern. Before you drive away, you want to pump your brakes a couple times to remove the slack in the line. Check your engine bay, specifically the brake fluid level, to make sure it doesn't overflow when doing this. 
remove the wheel chocks and you're ready to go. For those that have installed PowerStop Evolution Plus brake pads, here's the break-in procedure for that equipment. Okay, just got the brakes installed. I've been driving around really slowly, going to some less than busy roads to do the braking in process, which is 30 decelerations from 30 miles per hour. So we'll get it up to 30 and we'll slow pretty fast down to five. do that 30 times. You're supposed to wait 30 seconds. Alright, I think that was the 29th. Just one more away and I'll be at 30. So far police have not been called on me, which is positive. Coming up on our last break. getting about two to three breaks per lap at this housing development. Don't know how accurate the speedometer is on these Civics. Because it'll say I'm down to seven miles per hour and I'm almost stopped. I think there's a good lag, but anyways. I think we're good. All 30 are done and maybe there's someone at Power Stop laughing right now knowing that someone followed their rules. But I'll just uh, trust them and believe them that that was necessary. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe be interested in subscribing to our channel, DIY Around the Home, where we share videos on do-it-yourself fixes, appliance installation, car repairs, smart home technology, and just any other thing that happens around the home. Thanks.